Hey guys, we're going to explore the Elevation Profile tool to get 3D Elevation Profiles in QGIS today. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to add in some LiDAR data that we've been using in previous videos. It's this, um, well, that's not the right one, it's right here. It's this uh, LAZ file that we colored in the last video with PDAL. Now, I, got, I have something exciting that I want to tell you about. And if you're tired of watching ads on YouTube, um, I'm still gonna keep posting my videos on YouTube, but if you want an ad-free viewing experience, I'm gonna also post these YouTube videos on geospatialschool.com. Um, and I'm gonna post them with the code and with the data that I use. Um, it's gonna be a cost associated with it, probably about $5 a month. But if you wanna follow along directly with the data uh, and the code, then you can go ahead and go to Geospatial School find the course. I'll link it below when I have it all set up and, and sign up for that. You can unsubscribe at any time. But let's go ahead and get started with this. But the reason I'm doing that is because in the world of AI, and AI in a lot of ways cannibalizes um, the work experts do and rebrand or aggregates to be its own, um, I just want to provide you guys something that's real. So you know it came from me, not from AI, and you can access the data it does cost me money to store and serve the data in a reliable way. So that's why there's gonna be a cost associated with this. And it means I'm pulling you away from YouTube and I make ad revenue there. Uh, so this is just gonna be uh, an open source option slash geospatial school. It'll be on geospatialschool.com um, thing where if you if you wanna support me in that way, then you can go there and you can you can get all the videos with all the data um, for that for that for that fee monthly subscription price. Also, if you join the full access membership, this will be included in the full access membership, so you get access to all that for one annual price. Anyway, here's this LiDAR point cloud that we colorized. Like I said, if you want it, this is gonna be uploaded on Geospatial School in that course. Now we wanna use the Elevation Profile tool to see what this looks like in a 3D cross section. I've showed you in the past that we can look at this in 3D view, but let's take a look at how we do this with the 3D cross section. And so this is very easy to do in QGIS. We just go to view and there's this elevation profile right here. We just click on that and it's gonna pop up this panel underneath here. And now all we need to do to get an elevation profile is click this button here, which is to capture a curve. And we're just going to draw um, a line. We could do whatever we want. I'm just gonna draw a straight line to start. So let's just draw a straight line from here to here and then right click when you're done and it will add that line. And now you can see that it pulls up this cross section right here down below. And there are a few things we can do to make this, um, to work with this and to visualize this. So first I wanna show you these point symbols. Right now my point says is one millimeter and the style is square. I can change this to circle and it's gonna change not only the elevation profile plot but it's also going to change the uh, display on the 2D map view. And I can change this to points. So one point is smaller than one millimeter. You can see how um, it de-densifies this. Now this didn't look this didn't look like it's sparse and that's because there's another setting here we can adjust. If we go to our options here, you can see we have this tolerance and this is going to be in units. I have mine in meters because that is what uh, my projection is in. And I'm just going to change this tolerance here to, um, let's just change it to one meter to show you the difference. So if I change it to one meter, I hit enter, you're going to see this is going to get really, really sparse. So you can see how sparse that got there. Um, I can change this up to maybe two point circles. You can see how it changes. Now, let's go ahead and just adjust the tolerance here. Let's bump that up, let's try 10, and we'll see how that changes it. You can see we get some more trees, and you can see up here that, that gray bar um, around my line also changes. For fun, let's just change this to 100 so you can get a really good idea of how this works. So we do 100, and you can see how that works. And now you can get an idea of what's going on here because now we're showing all the points within 100 meters of that transect, so you can start to see some of the slope um, the side slope or side hill of this cross section pop out and it becomes harder to see the trees. 
We can change this down to 20, which I think is a pretty good representation to get some of that canopy structure, but not too much of the ground structure in there. Okay, so that's how we do that. Now, um, and that's the basics of this. Like that's really the elevation profile to it. It's super simple to use. Um, and notice how when we were at 100 meters, I'll go back to 100 meters, I forgot to point this out. Oops. So if we go back to 100, notice how wide this gets. And as we trace along, as we trace along um, our elevation profile, you notice that black dot up on the map shows exactly where we are. I'm going to change this back to, whoops, 20. So you got an identify result that popped up. Let's get rid of that. Um, and this is this just selected because of the identify tool that I accidentally clicked on. So if I went back to identify here, and I click on something here, and I clear this, that will go away. Okay, we'll put a pan here. So those are the basics of the elevation profile tool. Now notice that the symbolization down here is the same as if it were up here. There are a couple of things I want to point out. We're going to adjust the symbology in just a minute. I want to point out this tool here, which is to capture a curve from a feature. So if I had a line shape file in there or a temporary line, in fact, let's just do that right now. Let's go to layer and let's go to create a layer and let's make um, a new temporary scratch layer. And we'll just call it new scratch layer and geometry type will be line and we'll say okay and now if i go to my layers and i edit this so i'm editing right now and i choose a line here and i'm just going to demonstrate something here i can make this profile whatever shape i want i can make it zigzag back and forth and then i just right click to save that feature now i can click or i'm going to save the edits and I'm gonna stop editing. And I can click this button here to capture a curve from a feature. And new scratch layer. And I select my feature. And, come on now. Oh, and QGIS is going to crash. So we will re reload QGIS and we'll come back to this. This is the way it goes sometimes, folks. I'm going to click reload, pause the video, and come back to you. All right, so we've got QGIS back up. We'll go back to our browser. I'm going to add that um, point cloud back in. And then we're going to add a scratch layer again. I'm going to do a little simpler one. Layer, um, new temporary scratch. Make this a line. Um, I'm going to make it the same projection to see if that helps. Say, okay, I'm going to create a line here. I'm just going to do a simple line like this. And I'm going to save the edits. And I'm going to toggle editing. And I'm going to go to view, elevation profile. I'm going to um, create the profile from a feature. I'm going to select my feature. And there you go. Now you can see how that profile got pulled in. Here we can adjust our settings. You can see we came over the top of a peak of a little hill there. And so we, we get that elevation contrast from the side hill within 20 meters of the peak there. And you can see our profile just by using an existing layer. So very, very easy to use this. Now let's just go ahead and do uh, some symbology adjustments so you can see how that changes. So instead of doing RGB, I can attribute by classification, for example. And you can see that changes to ground points and unclassified points. Um, I can change this to attribute by ramp. And then I can do it by intensity. I can change it to the Z value. And you'll see that changes there also. Um, I can also do this by... Um, return number. And so you can see that we have um, first returns uh, versus um, last returns. And we can actually 
flip this. I'm going to better flip this color ramp. Or maybe not. Um, but you can see how we can start to adjust this. Um, we can do number of returns. And there you start to pull up the vegetation. The low returns represent the ground. The higher returns represent vegetation. And so we can easily start to break things out that way. And so that's what you can do with this uh, elevation profile tool. It's really, really handy. And once again, we're going to stop this video here. But remember that if you want to get this video with the associated data and future videos with associated data and code, just go to geospatialschool.com um, and check out that course that will have all the videos in it. And I'll make sure to link that once it's live. Thanks for watching, everyone.